Hey everyone, Heather here, and in today's video, I want to talk about one of the main characters in Final Fantasy XIV, Alphano Levier. Alphano is one of my favorite characters in Final Fantasy XIV, and I think the biggest reason why is because I can confidently say that he's probably the character who hits the lowest rock bottom. On my first playthrough, I didn't really understand like how much Alphano's actions really were a huge mistake and how much they affected the entire story of Final Fantasy XIV. I got a sense of it because every time Alphano would reflect or we would see a scene where he was kind of like doing some reflection, he always came off very guilty. He always came off like, yeah, I really messed up. But on my second playthrough in New Game Plus, oh man, knowing what happens and going through it all over again, the writing is clearly on the wall, all the signs are there, and it was me playing with just like this huge sense of dread because as a warrior of light, I am limited in how I can interact with the characters and I wished I could have advised Alphano or gave him a sign like, look at all of these red flags, but obviously I couldn't. And if I had as a warrior of light, we would have no story that is Final Fantasy XIV. So I wanted to make a video about how badly Alphano messes up and how his mistake ends up being like a huge domino effect to the entire story for all the expansions to come. So here is your spoiler warning. I'm going to be talking about events that occur all through A Realm Reborn and Heaven's Ward right to the beginning of Stormblood. So I'm gonna to try to avoid Stormblood and onwards, but if you've played through all of Heaven's Ward, including the patch content, you should be good to go. So let's start with who is Alphano? What struck me about Alphano immediately from the get-go is that he, he came off very arrogant for some reason. Like I, I remember him specifically calling the company of heroes, the company of buffoons. Like even on my first playthrough, I was like, wow, it's very out of character, especially knowing how he grows and who he becomes for him to name call another band of adventurers. It just, it's so out of character for him now. But at the time when we first meet him, that's just how he was. The other thing I knew about Alphano is that he was very capable, right? So it's it's very clear that he is young. He is a twin. He seems to be like one of the youngest characters that we interact with, but he has this very important leadership role. He's in the same room and sitting at the same table as the leaders of the Eorzean nations. And I, you know, I don't think that's random, right? Like, Obviously, he has proven himself in some way. Okay, Alphano Levior, son of House Levior. It was at the tender age of 11 that Alphano and his twin sister Alize were accepted into the prestigious studium. Alphano has since worked to see his grandfather's wishes made reality. It is why he joined the Scions and later why he founded the Crystal Braves. So him and Alize are the youngest ever to enter the studium, which is, you know, I think a lot of people that go through the studium, including the Archons, have been very influential in terms of the history of Eorzea. So for him to do it at such a young age, it's like clearly age and your youth is not holding you back from doing incredible things. And you've proven yourself not just in your circle, but outside of Charlian, which is why you're sitting at the table with the Eorzean leaders. The other thing I always recognized about Alphano is that he was always willing to speak his mind and, you know, combine that with like the arrogance that I was getting a sense of. There were times where I felt like, wow, <laughs> who are you to be talking back in this way or speaking up in this way? It was my hope that you would offer more substantial aid than prayer. I know it is within your means. Do not presume that you have knowledge of our every concern. The Galleons and the Beast Tribes are but two of many. Like here's a scene where he questions Emmerich just to his face. <laughs> I must reiterate that it would behoove your nation to rejoin the Aorzean Alliance. Once again, I must respectfully disagree. On what grounds? I can't help but admire that fearlessness in sharing your thoughts because it's something that I just don't have. Like that is something that does not come naturally to me. I'm always, I don't know, I, I find it hard to think about what to say, especially if I'm trying to give feedback to 
people who are above me or a group of people. It's hard because, you know, I'm stepping on toes. I'm worried about what other people are going to think and all of that. And Alphano clearly, like, is not thinking about that at all. And even when he's speaking to the Eorzean leaders, it's like, I think they realize that he's young, right? They, they remind him a lot of the times that he's young, but I feel like they don't hold it against him. So it's like, yes, you, you know, Raubound will refer to him as boy in front of everyone, which I think is very kind of, I don't know, condescending. The enemy is at their gates and you would cower behind yours? No one is cowering, boy. We will offer what support we can. I get a sense that the Eorzean leaders are trying to use these moments as teachable moments, right? Because I think at the end of the day, they do believe in him. Like, I get a sense of that. So despite his arrogance, despite, I don't know, his um, audacity, I guess is the word, in speaking his mind and sharing his concerns and maybe not necessarily thinking <laughs> before he speaks, his input is clearly valued, right? Like who else would be sitting in that spot? Who else would be bringing up those concerns? It's it's clearly Alphano. And it's with this sense of trust from Alphano that he has clearly earned and proven himself that allows him to spearhead his own project that he pitches, which is the Crystal Braves. And as we know, the Crystal Braves ends up being a very pivotal point in the story of Final Fantasy XIV. And it's the Crystal Braves that like, ugh, it's just, I just feel so bad because every step of the way, it's like, this is such a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. I take that back. It's not a bad idea. It's just the execution of, of how he does it that I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many things that, that you could have done <laughs> differently to, I don't know, better prepare and protect yourself and just do all these things to prevent like things ending up blowing in your face. And it's this whole mistake, right? The mistake of the Crystal Braves that really makes Alphano, like this is the reason why I'm making this video. This is the reason why I think that Alphano is such a relatable character because it just reminds me so much of my own career it reminds me so much of of me and like i remember the enthusiasm that i had like graduating from college and feeling very confident i'm this like person who's entering the workforce for the first time i'm super excited to prove myself i'm excited to like see what i can do see what i'm capable of see how i can contribute make whatever organization i work for grow and and make changes and and like just get in there right like I, I remember that feeling which is you know what i get from alphano but one of the lessons that i learned very quickly it's one of these hard lessons that like people can tell you about all day but you don't really learn it or realize it until you learn it the hard way by actually going through it and it's that experience right it's that experience of these mistakes that you make that teach you things that like give things different meaning. So let's talk about the Crystal Braves. What is the goal, right? Like what is the vision of the Crystal Braves? Why is this even a thing that is being pitched? Why is every Eorzean leader okay with it? Like what what is the the big picture that the Crystal Braves is working towards? If I go to here in the encyclopedia, the Crystal Braves are established as a model army meant to pave the way for a single unified grand company of Eorzea. Taking to heart the motto for the freedom of all, they transcended political boundaries as they sought to quell the realm's myriad problems. When it became apparent that the Scion's reach exceeded their grasp, Alphano Leviar proposed a unified grand company of Eorzea. With the approval and funding of the Eorzean Alliance, he established the Crystal Braves as a precursor for this organization. Alphano himself served as the first commander and paying no heed to their homeland or background, recruited his men from amongst the Grand Company's adventurers and former sellswords. Come, take your place at the Scion's side as guardians of Eorzea, and together we shall fight for the freedom of all. For the freedom of all! So, I get it, you know, like, I get it and I don't get it. 
because I get why you would want a grand company of yours yet. I, I think it was the the circle of knowing and the scions of the seventh dawn. I the circle of knowing is the organization that existed before it became the scions. It was one of these two organizations that is the reason why the grand companies exist in the first place because I think it was on the advice of I think it was Louis Swa. He went to the Eorzean leaders and and told them like you guys need to have some kind of grand company like create this grand company to protect yourself from I think it was the primal summonings and that's why each Eorzean nation ended up creating their immortal flames and the twin adder I forget the other ones but that that's why those grand companies exist in the first place so it would make sense that a member of the scions of the seventh dawn would also pitch the idea of a grand company that is an Eorzean company right like it's not a, a grand company that's specific to a nation the thing that I don't understand about this is like first of all why can't it just be the scions right like why why can't it just be the scions like the scions are already operating outside of the Eorzean nations like why why can't we recruit more members to the Scions? Like how how are the Scions different from the Crystal Braves, I guess? And I know it's supposed to be like more militaristic, but I don't know. And then the other question I had was, why does there have to be a grand company of Eorzea? And why instead could you not devote those resources to the grand companies of each nation, since each nation would know their own threats better than anyone else, right? Like, I don't, I don't understand why we had to get like corrupt coin from the syndicate and whatever to, to fund this like new organization and instead fundraise to just, you know, enhance or bolster up the existing Eorzean companies. There's already an infrastructure there. So I'm not, I, I'm just confused as to why there has to be a, a separate thing, right? So these are like questions that I just had of like, everyone's signing off on this and you are willing to, to do this whole new project despite like all the problems and all, you know, you're saying that we're super busy, but we're gonna start this new project right now. Like it just, I don't know. And it's funny because like in the encyclopedia, let me see if I can find, find one. Each Eorzean nation, right? Like here's, okay, so here's Limsa. This is the Maelstrom. This is the like chain of command in the Maelstrom there's a lot already happening you know what i mean like there's what do we got we got the chief admiral she leads the maelstrom command within there there's the crimson fleet and then privateers the privateers are the i think the privateers are the pirates but we're not actually calling them pirates because piracy is banned but you know we know what the, we know what it is and even look the order of the twin adder look at this do you see this like there's already a an infrastructure here that isn't just like one thing right like the adder's nest has main four main units the blue badgers the white wolves the red otters and the black boars and the yellow serpents so five okay and then on on the other side of that there's the ranger units which is god's quiver and the wood whalers so you have five six seven different military factions that i know that they are specific to that nation like gridania but is it really necessary to now create this other thing? It, I don't know. I have questions. But clearly no one else seems to, to, to think that this is a problem because he gets the sign off from Kane, Sana, Raubon, and uh, Merle Veb, as well as Menphilia and all the science. Like everyone's cool with this, right? Like they, they all agree that this is something that should exist. So, okay, fine. The Crystal Braves are happening. So now it's time to put the plan into action and Alphano invites us to <laughs> be totally in charge of the recruitment of these new members that are gonna be joining the Crystal Braves. We're going to visit each Eorzean nation and he's gonna to talk to the leaders while we go do the recruiting. Here is red flag number one. 
This is Alphano, and he goes, As for potential members, tis of no matter should they already be pledged to another institution, only that they are willing to lend their strength when the situation demands it. So this is the only, like, guidance that we get from Alphano about who it is that we're trying to recruit. This is totally a huge red flag, okay? Like, not just recruitment, but recruitment for this specific, very important project that is supposed to be the pilot to your grand company of Eorzea. Like, wouldn't you want to hand pick who is going to be in the Crystal Braves because this pilot is so important? If the if the pilot fails, then the grand company does not go forward, right? Like the project doesn't go forward. So wouldn't you want to hand pick and, and really put together a plan of the exact candidate, the ideal candidate that you're trying to look for? So here's us talking to the first person we approach real which i remember real he's awesome like he's totally fine well if it ain't oliver i'd not forget adventurer brave enough or daft enough to seek the shortcut into titan's bedchamber. i feel like your experience in the company of heroes is very great experience that can apply and bring value to the vision of the crystal braves great I feel like we should talk about that for the bare minimum requirements of the type of candidate that we're looking for. <laughs> like, I feel like everyone should have some similar experience. You're looking to put together a new crew, top tier work, sounds like a right lark it does. Alrighty, last count me in. The heroes may have gone their separate ways, but I ain't ready to climb into me grave just yet. So like, if we consider these conversations to be like mini interviews, to me, Real's like, you have the enthusiasm, you have the experience, you've kind of given this project context in terms of your priorities in life, right? Like you are looking for something to apply yourself because you, you want to see what else that you're capable of. Like this is just mm, a okay candidate. And I would hope that the rest of them are just as capable, but they're not. <laughs> okay. We go to Hana, Hananza, Hananza. Hananza is a guild master of, what is this? Is this mining in Limsa? A precursor to a united Eorzean grand company. Hmm. Well, I do admire the scope of your ambition. My responsibilities are here at Nydeek and Vimeli's. Keep me close to the forge. Why would we be recruiting a guild master who like, this is clearly a full-time job on top of a full-time job. Like, why would we bother even asking, you know? I have not the time to be traipsing hither and yon across the realm. Should you require my skills as an armor, however, I might be willing to accept some special commissions. Yeah, like I, I honestly wouldn't have bothered asking. So the next candidate is Roswen, who I believe is one of the leaders of one of the like pirate factions in Limsa. And they say, who in the bloody hell do you think you're talking to, Drylander? I'm a pirate, not some sodden knight in shine and plate. If you're looking for a self-righteous fop, try knocking on that dandy Carvalain's door. I know it doesn't matter, but like, I feel like instead of asking these people, we could have asked somebody else, like someone who we're actually looking for, for these specific reasons, you know? So we do go ask Carvalain who is a leader of another pirate faction. And he says, an organization with the freedom to operate with territorial impunity. I must say, your proposal intrigues me. Okay. And then he says, but the Krakens know, well know that there is a time to act and a time to watch. And I'm afraid this trial company of yours falls into the latter category. Yes, I totally agree. Like that is the exact response that I would give if I was trying to be recruited into this Crystal Brave thing, which is why I think it was so important to actually hand pick like someone who understands the vision. They, they, they are bringing something very specific to the table, just like each member of the Scions is bringing something specific to the table. And each member of the Scions understands the purpose and the vision of what the Scions of the Seventh Dawn are trying to do. This is why you're, you can't just ask anybody on the upper decks. It's just a waste of time. Here's us in Gridania. And the first person that we're talking to is Laurentius. Laurentius. And I totally remember this guy. Oh gods, could it truly be you? By what fickle fortune must the first face I see upon my release be yours? Okay, so this, I think he went to jail. <laughs> Could it be that you don't remember me? It is I, Laurentius, the man whose crimes you exposed. I was a whaler and a regular patron at Buscarons. This was a person who I think was like 
trading secrets to the to the Garleans or something. Like we we caught him. It was one of the you know the quests in A Realm Reborn. Recruiting, eh? And what is your policy on reformed convicts? That is a very good question, Laurentis. But we can't tell you because we have talked about no policy about anything. We're just we're literally just going door to door asking anybody who will listen <laughs> about our very important Crystal Braves thing. As matters stand, the Wood Whalers will have not more to do with me, of course, because you totally betrayed everybody. So like, I also agree why, why? <laughs> I'm all about second chances, okay? I'm totally all about second chances, but for the importance of what the Crystal Braves is trying to achieve, I feel like you can assist with something else, but not something as important as this. Like it's not something that I I would personally be willing to take a chance on because of how important it, this thing is a symbol to everyone. Like I, we're going to the Eorzean nation leaders and this thing has to work. I want to make sure that every step of the way is someone who's invested in it. Revan told you say, I shall leave at once. You shall not regret this. I promise you, I'm a changed man. Famous freaking last words, because if you don't remember what Laurentius does, he's, you know, he's basically Ilbert's second in command. No, third in command. Either way, he's, he's not... It's, it, this is where it, see, this is where it's starting to fall apart. <laughs> All right, next person is Elian. Why, you were barely more than a novice adventurer then, but look how far you've come. Mother Meun tells me it was you who felled the fearsome Black Wolf. And now you seek stout-hearted souls to fill the ranks of a new order. Hmm. Yes, yes, I'll do it. This is the very thing I've spent my entire adventuring career working towards. I shall join your company just as soon as I've seen Ilsador safely home. I like Elian. Like, I, I like that you know, in this mini interview, you have said that you have a, an entire adventuring career. Our goals align with your personal goals. Like, this is good. You know, this is good. This is how it should be with with everybody. And, and I like how dependable she is, right? Like, she's willing to take care of her, I think it's her grandfather. So that's someone who puts other people first. Great. Awesome. All right. This is Ursandel. I specifically remember us trying to recruit this guy because this is the guy that was like ridden with guilt because of the whole hawk manor thing like he used to work at hawk manor and he asked us to go deal with what's happening at hawk manor and he feels so guilty and responsible for having contributed to um i forgot what the lady's name is at hawk manor but like to her downfall and then like we go ask him and i was kind of hoping he would say yes because I, I really liked him and I feel like when someone is just like drowning in guilt, finding a new purpose is a great way to kind of not make that guilt go away, but help you manage it and carry it and move forward to some kind of new purpose, right? So I was kind of hoping that he would say yes, but he does say no. You would offer this old man a place in your company of champions. I'm both puzzled and honored by your invitation. Also, he's he's a butler, though. So, like, why? Right? Like, if we're a military faction, um, I don't know. Maybe we needed someone who was going to be, like, Tataru's position in the Crystal Braves. Like, the admin. Uh, Pray for you, me, young mistress, but I cannot accept. I've sworn to abide here for whatever scant years remain to me and bear responsibility for the evils my lady has wrought upon this land. So, yeah, it's really hard when it comes to guilt because guilt is such a thing that has to be dealt with from within. You know, like the person has to be willing to take the first step. So I get why he says no. I wish he would have said yes. But also, do you have like military experience? I don't know. I, I, I don't even know who we're asking. Okay, the next person is Singuled. Tis not often a guild officer such as myself gets recruited. And this company of yours certainly sounds to have some promise, but its duties appear less than focused. It's like so cringe that people on the outside could tell and tell you to your face that your vision is not focused, right? If we are not appearing like we have focus on the outside, then that clearly means there is no focus on the inside. I must refuse your invitation until such time as your organization is more organized. 
Oh, it's so cringe. Like I just I'm I just feel so embarrassed that we're that we've put ourselves into this position. I'm sorry, Oliver, for for making you do this. <laughs> and last but not least, we're in Ulda, and the first person that we talk to is Woolred, which like this the Google Red thing like makes me so sad. It just makes me so sad. Wait, you're the lady who came to Little Alamigo looking for that masked devil. Who knows what might've happened if you hadn't, I'd probably be dead and a whole lot more of my friends besides we were such fools. So if you don't remember the whole storyline with Wool Red, he was uh, like in a little rebellion faction within the rebellion of Little Alamigo and him and his friends were persuaded by I think it was La Habrea, some Asian, to try to summon Ralgar and go back and reclaim El Amigo from, from the Empire. Any road, that disaster really got me to thinking about our homeland and about the outsider who saved us from ourselves. I realized how easily I'd been manipulated and vowed to ma make myself more of a worldly man. So here I am, a new company of champions, and you say it will take me to all corners of the realm? That sounds exactly like the kind of opportunity I need. And don't worry, I'm not the stripling you met in Little Alamigo. I've prepared myself to fight the evil I now know is out there. So I just gave this whole thing about second chances when Laurentius was telling us like he needs a second chance. I feel like the difference here is that Wilred specifically had dealings with an Anassian, right? Like and summoning and like trying to summon a primal. And I feel like since my impression is we're going to be dealing with more of those issues, whereas Laurentius was like just being a turncoat to the empire. Like, I think this is a situation where it is case by case. I'm really happy that we recruited Woolred, but it's also super sad because if you don't remember what happens, Woolred ends up getting murdered because of the Crystal Braves, right? Like this is why I think that this whole Crystal Brave thing is the the biggest mistake that any scion any main character in final fantasy 14 has made because it's not just like oh yeah your little project sucks or like you know you kind of messed up no somebody got murdered like someone who was trying to turn their life around i think he's only 18 like that's what it says in the encyclopedia so he's like this young person who has their whole life ahead of them and he gets murdered because of the crystal braves and it's just like you know, if if the responsibility and the vision and the execution of that vision is Alphano, then yeah, it's Alphano's fault. Next person is Landabert. Ah, you'd be surprised what rumors drift down to Pearl Lane. I know of this glorious new company of yours and just how far I'd go to avoid getting involved with it. Whispers on the street say your organization is funded by corrupt coin, by syndicate money. If you think you're recruiting for a just cause, then you're a bigger fool than I took you for. I feel like we're already at a disadvantage if there's already like rumors of corruption before anyone's even been like working on their first day because where is this information coming from like if if this pilot project is such an important thing then wouldn't we want it to have the best reputation like wouldn't we want to go out of our way to make sure that everything is above board and everything like i don't know it's all it's all sus Okay, next person we talk to is Sint Goat. Sint Got. Uh, and I remember this person's like, I'm too busy. A company that looks to cure the ills of the realm entire. Listen, friend, I can scarce bear the complaints of the next stall over, let alone the conundrums of a neighboring nation. <laughs> yeah, same. Okay, so here's us reporting to Alphano, and he says, There are those who have risen to the challenge, nonetheless, and the hope that inspires these people was born in no small part from the victories you yourself have won. Yeah, that's the thing that makes me like even more embarrassed because if if you're gonna put my name on it, right? Like if you're gonna put Oliver Benley's name on this, then I want it to be a representation that I slash Oliver Benley can be proud of, right? Like, I mean, how many how many times do we see this in real life where people become like a, an ambassador or an influencer for a brand that ends up being shady or sus or whatever, like? Before I align myself with anything like that, I want to make sure that that, you know, the values are aligned so that I can feel proud of what I'm 
attaching my name to. Okay, so here's us bringing the concern up. You were concerned by the syndicate's involvement, as was I. This was the origin of every coin of their contribution carefully scrutinized and recorded. This organization will not be built on corruption. I'm not sure what happened, like where this went wrong. I mean, I think there were a lot of places where it went wrong, but this specifically, like if we bring up a concern about this not being built on corruption, Alphano is recognizing like, yes, I hear you, we made sure. And literally the entire Crystal Braves is built on corruption. And that's what ends up kicking off the entire story that is Final Fantasy XIV, or one of the things. Who's lying to who, right? Like who's lying to, to Alphano? Who examined the origin of every coin, right? Like if it wasn't Alphano, then who was it? And can we trust that person, right? Like, can we trust that person with the books clearly we can't naturally i would prefer not to rely upon outside sources at all but even my family's substantial coffers could not sustain a venture of this magnitude <sighs> if it's supposed to be a pilot then why does it have to be so big if you could only use levy your money that's totally clean and above board with a smaller group of people that we trust and are handpicked, I feel like that would have been more successful than like spreading ourselves thin, not dotting our I's and crossing our T's. And like now, you know, freaking we put Elbred of all people in charge. Oh, it's just so sad. So the next part of this is us passing out the uniforms to the Crystal Braves right before the inauguration ceremony. And there are people that we give uniforms to that aren't people that we personally recruited, right? So Yu Yu Hase, we're giving him a uniform and I don't know who recruited Yu Yu Hase or who screened him or who invited him. I, I have no idea. This person I think ends up being like the second in command of the Crystal Braves under Ilbred and is the one who literally puts a knife to the neck of Alphano when it all hits the fan. And our first interaction with Yu Yu Hase is this, right? We give him the uniform and he says, those who believe this company will see no riches are short-sighted fools. The giving of oneself is an investment in the future. Thus did I sign my name to the cause. Cool, so you're only in it for the money, which there is nothing wrong with being financially motivated. Like if you, if you wanna make money, awesome. I just think that if you're going to be a member of the Crystal Braves, the thing that should be driving you is the vision and then the money, right? Like, I think in the world of Eorzea, there are other ventures that you can pursue that are optimized for helping you to make money. This is not one of them. This is why he ends up just turning coat and working for, what's his name, Tel Telegi at Alegi because it's just whoever is going to pay him the most who cares what uniform I'm wearing or who, you know, whatever organization I represent, the only thing I care about is money. So I'm, you know, here's Telegi at Telegi giving me more money. And so that I'm just gonna do what he says. All right, we give him the uniform. These uniforms were a splendid idea. Once our organization has made a name for itself, there shall be wealth aplenty in selling replica costumes to the adoring masses. What, like I'd fire you right there and then. I'd, I seriously like, why is this an idea that you have? Like, why are you thinking of this? What? Like the fame, the fortune? We are not on the same page. We do not have the same values. You do not believe in the vision that we're trying to build here. Like, I just, why are you, who brought you in, man? Who brought you in? See, this is the problem when you just haphazardly just ask anybody on the street because we just need bodies in this organization. If it's just that, then like, why like go work for the existing grand companies why why get placed into the crystal braves which is this like very special signature pilot project that we're trying to i, I just all right the next person that we go to is laurentius and this kind of made me laugh because he was like i thought it best to mimic my fellows here but i admit that i have no idea what we're supposed to be doing i wouldn't want people who are just like i'm just gonna do what the next guy is doing I feel like you, you need to be strong enough to ask for direction because I want to be able to give it to you. But this is also funny. 
Ah, our new uniforms. I reminded of my induction to the Wood Whalers. Yeah, which obviously didn't mean anything to you because you betrayed them. Here's Eliane. Isildore has at last retired from an adventurer's life. Though I shall miss his wisdom and irrepressible spirit, I'm excited to forge my own path forwards. I like that. Enthusiasm. Awesome. Like, I'm excited to see you shine. You're excited to, your to see yourself shine. Awesome. Ah, yes. Uniform. Thank you. Truth be told, the thought of pledging myself to such a lofty organization is somewhat intimidating. That's okay. Like... Imposter syndrome is a thing that many a successful people suffer from. And, you know, this is a this is the place to prove yourself because we all feel the same way. And here's real. Hello there, last looking for me was yeah, I'd suggest giving a whistle, but I'm not sure I'd hear it amongst all the bustle. Ah, proper uniforms and all. This thing will cut off the blood in me head. Not to worry though, I'm sure she'll be fine after making a few adjustments. That's cool. Like, see, if that's your commentary after giving the the uniform to you that's fine like that's it's like talking about the weather you know there's there's nothing of consequence but if you're like yeah we're gonna sell merch I can't. <laughs> okay will red a uh, little alamigo can learn much from revenants toll this town can be so alive in the midst of such desolation i love this i love this so much like it says so much about his character where his priorities are he's constantly being inspired and thinking of his home and little alamigo and like how he can make things better i love how driven and focused he is because that's how i feel like sometimes i'll just walk around my house or or even like when we're out and about getting lunch or whatever like i'll, I'll see something and i'll be like oh that's a great idea for my youtube channel or i should i should try to make that you know incorporate that into video or whatever because at the end of the day like i'm always thinking about the thing that i'm very passionate about same thing with Woolred, and i really admire that all right the next person we talked to is erg ergmus ergmus this scarlet garb makes me a proud member of the maelstrom and a hearty defender of limsa lamensa yet in truth i stand for the betterment of the realm and thought this new company a fine opportunity con to contribute on a grander scale cool i like that so so you are currently working for the maelstrom but you are looking for growth right professional growth we're we're looking to climb the ladder a little bit we're looking to apply the experience and maybe take on more responsibilities awesome this is the perfect organization for you to to do that and i don't know who recruited you but i'm cool with it and i'm glad you're here and i think ergmis ends up being one of those crystal braves that sticks around i think that like when alphano goes to apologize and there's only like the four left. I think Erdmus is is one of them. Next person that we're talking to is Ilbird, which, you know, if you've played through at least the end of Heaven's Award, we know Ilbird and we know everything that's about to go down with this guy. I don't know who recruited you. I don't know where he came from. And clearly he knew what he was doing. Their plans had already been put in place before this moment even occurred which is like sad but here he is i don't believe we've met i'm ilbert and i will have the honor of leading my fellow recruits as captain much did i lose to the calamity and i look forward to aiding others in rebuilding their lives cool who made you captain where'd you come from who brought you in who referred you why? The uniforms are a shrewd decision. There is no easier method of creating a common bond among what is essentially a band of strangers. I can think of a thousand other ways that you can create a common bond among strangers. Like we could do icebreakers, we could do retreats, you know, we can do all kinds of things. We can do a boot camp. We don't have to do uniforms. So here's one of the lessons that I feel like Alphano learns that reminds me of my own career. And it's represented in Ilbird because Ilbird is the second in command under Alphano and also was vouched for by Raubon because they know each other from Alamigo. So like clearly capable, trustworthy, like, you know, someone who truly believes in the cause or at least appears to. And even when we catch the Ivy, he goes into this whole speech, yet never did we bemoan our lot in life, nor did we begrudge others their fortunes. We accepted the hand that we had been dealt and played it to the best of our ability. Mind you, Alphano is standing right here listening to this entire conversation. Life was a battle, aye, but no matter what fate threw at us, we took it on the chin and came back for more. Everything we have, we fought for. 
But whereas I sold my sword, you, Marshall, you sold your comrades. If life has taught me one thing, it is that you never betray your own. I would sooner cut off my own arm than raise a hand against a friend. It was me. This sentence right here is like the epitome of one of those hard lessons I learned in life where someone in a position of power can say something so convincingly and be lying through their teeth. And like, it's hard because ulterior motives is a thing that like, I, I just naively didn't realize that people had, you know, like that's just something I had to learn the hard way. I remember going through my career, like in the early, in the early years of my career, thinking that everyone thought the way that I did because like how, how would I how would I know to think otherwise right like I just assume that everyone is going to to approach situations the same way that I would right so like I would never lie I would never say one thing and do another thing and so I believed people when they said that they were going to do something or you know like this like I would never betray my own i would sooner cut off my arm like i would have taken that at face value just like alpha no and then like bam it you know this person completely turns around and does something that you never saw them doing and then you feel weird like it's such a weird feeling i mean for alpha no it's you know the consequences are dire like in real life nobody died but there like there were definitely times in my career where i felt humiliated and embarrassed for for being so trusting right for for believing in people that they were going to act the same way that i would have like and it's not their fault like I, I don't blame anyone i just now as a 37 year old understand that it's not that you can't trust anyone it's just that you don't you can't possibly understand what people are motivated by like regardless of what they're saying what your priorities are are not necessarily the same as somebody else even though they're on the same team and that's like a really weird hard lesson that i feel like someone can tell you that but until you go through it it doesn't really hit you until you experience it firsthand this is why this whole like crystal brave thing just makes me so like cringed and sad because it's it's just something that i feel like so many of us can relate to now let's talk about how it all falls apart because as we know the crystal braves ends up being a huge mistake a a, a giant failure and ends up being a domino effect for the rest of the story that is Final Fantasy XIV. A number of the Braves were pawns carefully placed by the Old On Elite at the organization's outset. Under Captain Ilbred, second in command of the Braves, half of the force served as the Monetarist private army, unbeknownst to the Grand Companies or their leaders. The rogue Braves were complicit in Telegi Adelegi's plot to assassinate the Sultana, or rather in Lodorito Nanorito's clever exploitation of the conspiracy for his own benefit. In the end, the Crystal Braves were disbanded, their history forever besmirched by the wanton actions of a few. The worst part of this whole like Crystal Braves thing, especially for Alphano, is that it's literally in history books, like what happens to the Crystal Braves and, and what went down. And it's forever attached to Alphano Levier. Like it's one thing when, you know, we make mistakes in our career and the only one who thinks about it and can't stop thinking about it at night is us. But for it to literally go down in history books for everyone to remember is like, oh, that sucks. And it's not even just malicious right like i'm not saying that everyone has a, a dark side or an evil side or you know you can't trust anybody like i'm not saying that but like i remember a time in my career where i was so excited to be working at this organization i had so many ideas and a very unique skill set that this particular organization had never had before like it was a small organization so they 
like what I specifically did in most of my career is marketing communications specifically with like social media and content creation. And this is like, you know, I quit my career and, and started my own business in 2016. So this is like 10 years, before, you know, 2006 to 2016. So it's a very different time. Like I feel like now the, the idea that social media wouldn't be part of marketing is unheard of. Like it's, it's, of course it's included right but before it wasn't people were still learning like what is facebook what is this instagram thing what is this youtube thing i had the skill set that the organization had not had before and i was excited to to be able to like oh you know this thing that we keep talking about like i can actually do this like i can do this all by myself and make it happen and i'm willing to do that i'm willing to go above and beyond and work weekends and like bring my laptop home and just never stop working to make this thing a reality. And I remember in the midst of me busting my butt trying to to do all these new lofty things and and like prove myself and and make a difference and contribute as much as I can and and like my only motivation was just was genuine excitement like it, it's it was so nice to actually have this challenge that excited me like it it was for nothing else it wasn't like i was trying to get promoted or trying to make more money or trying to take someone's position like literally i was just excited to to work at this job and make these ideas come to life because i hadn't had that ability before so to have more freedom, to have a budget, like I, I was excited to, to, you know, make stuff happen. And I specifically remember one time in the midst of all this, right? Like, I, I don't know, it must have gotten to the point where I was like stressed because I was like really just spending a lot of time on all this stuff and it was taking over my life and all of that. And I remember walking into my boss's office and they were just playing solitaire like they were just playing solitaire and I don't know I want to say that there's nothing wrong with that but it was such a like slap in the face moment for me because I could be so motivated I I, I could be so enthusiastic and ambitious and it's not even for me right like it's not even I, like I don't even have any personal motivations. It's it's literally like I wanted, I wanted this thing to exist at this organization because I felt like it would make a difference. It would make the organization better as a whole, and everyone bought into it. And everyone was like, "Yes, like go do your thing. Like this this is awesome." And then to see the person at the helm just playing solitaire in the middle of the day really made me realize that like oh, not everyone is as motivated as I am for whatever reason. Like, I, I don't blame them, right? Like, who am I to tell you what to do? Like, you're the boss, you know, you do whatever. But I remember walking back to my office and thinking like, so I'm super committed. I'm like way over committed. And like the person who's steering the ship is just chilling. And that made me feel like, really weird right like it made me feel like why am i why am i working twice as hard as the person who's supposed to be setting the example like it it just made me feel like it made me feel like what's the point you know and and i feel like these are these are like one of those hard lessons that i learned in my career that reminds me about this whole like alpha no crystal brave thing because people can people can agree with you and 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 support you and encourage you and and you know clearly your your energy and enthusiasm for this project that you're spearheading is undeniable like everyone can see it leaders can see it people of influence can see it people that you're leading can see it and everyone believes in you but like you you just never really know what other people are thinking or, or why they're thinking what they're thinking and it's just you know it's like it's a it's just like one of those bitter lessons that you learn another weird lesson that you learn the hard way that alpha no learn the hard way is that you know 
everyone has the capacity to manipulate and manipulation is one of those things like I just I feel I just feel so weird you know it's like I get a bad taste in my mouth because everyone is capable of doing it this is not a superpower anybody could do this doesn't doesn't matter who you are everyone is capable of manipulating someone else and it's just such a you know I, I can see how you can I don't know manipulate for good right like try to try to push someone in a in a positive direction but I, I also <laughs> I also see how it can be used for bad and obviously like obviously many people took advantage of Alpha Nose gusto for the crystal braves and like had manipulated that from the start like before it was even a thing before we had even recruited our first member alfano and his whole vision was already being manipulated by teleji adeleji and it's a it's a weird thing because like i remember so many times in my career wondering why there has to be like a this side versus that side when we all work for the same organization like aren't we all on the same team you know like in Alphano's case aren't we all for the betterment of Eorzea like I, I don't like why does there have to be a, a manipulation to to do it this way or that way you know and of course and of course there's you know that's why Ilbred thinks that it has to be done this way because like he believes that he has to do this crazy thing like you know he's also being manipulated by the Asians, so like it, everyone's being manipulated and it's all just a mess that whole idea of man manipulation i feel like is such a hard lesson for for alfano which i think up until that point in his life had been getting all of his training and experience in a very controlled protective environment right whether it was at charlian the studium being surrounded by his peers his family having this um you know having been born into this uh very influential family and having this status and having uh resources being highborn like having the last name levy or having a grandfather who you know literally went down in history like having this kind of background every single training or teachable moment that you've had in life has been in a very controlled environment where the idea of someone manipulating you just has never happened before because you're you're surrounded by like-minded people and then as soon as you go out right like you go out into the real world you go out into your career where you're working with strangers and you have no idea what their background is or their experiences or their motivations or whatever like you know nothing about them the only thing you know is like what they're saying. You can have all the training, all the education, and even all the experience in the world. But as soon as you step out of your element and your bubble and the world you grew up in and that safe environment and you go into the real world and you start interacting with people that are not necessarily like-minded, are driven by different things, have different motivations, have a completely different life experience than you. They're lowborn. They, they grew up in poverty they had to do certain things to survive like survival was something that Alphano has never even thought of like it, that's not even a a thing like the, his his context for survival is like primals being summoned whereas for you know Rory I or the Ivy or Ilbred it's like I'm just trying to eat right like I'm just trying to get food so I can literally live to the next day he just cannot possibly begin to understand a person who's grown up in that context until he actually meets them right like he, he just he just can't like even if someone tells you i really don't think that you can put yourself in their position until you see it right like until you actually see them and 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 speak to them and 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 understand them and it's going to take more than a conversation born in el amigo ilbred and his family fled their homeland south following the garlean invasion ilbred worked as an adventurer to support his kin until they were lost in a fire that consumed their home a fire caused by the calamity suddenly alone in the world there was only one thing left to ilbred to see el amigo reclaimed and return the remains of his loved ones to their homeland 
see it's like when you when you learn that that's what's driving you it's not even just like reclaim alamigo for no reason it's literally reclaim alamigo so that you can return your loved one's remains to their homeland like that's just another layer on top of another layer all i ever wanted was to liberate my homeland and i ate dirt to make it happen but what have i achieved after all these years in servitude nothing not a bloody thing if we ourselves are not free free to think and to act how are we ever to reclaim our own land know this there is nothing I would not give to take back Alamigo. Nothing! He rested all his hopes upon his old friend Raubon, who had become a member of the Syndicate. Yet despite his vaunted position, the Flame General made no attempts to raise an army to wrest his native city-state from the hands of her invaders. Lost to despair, Ilbred pledged himself to Loyal Rito and joined the Crystal Braves as a double agent. Okay, Yu Yu Hase. Growing up as a beggar, Goldeneye Yu Yu Hase labored hard and long to escape his poverty, eventually establishing his own porter service, only to see it vanish after suffering exploitation at the hands of wicked merchants. I feel like if you learn these lessons early, it will influence the way that you go about life forever, right? So if someone manipulated you, if you were betrayed by wicked merchants, like I think it takes a I think it takes a lot of character for someone to not turn around and do the same thing. It reminds me of um an antagonist in Stormblood which is why I don't actually like this antagonist. I, I, I said I wouldn't do spoilers, so I'm just gonna not name them and I'll save it for another video. But this antagonist is actually a very a very popular antagonist. It's, it's one that came up in my Vothry video a lot. I don't really like them because I felt like they did this, right? They, they were hurt and then they turn around and hurt other people because they were hurt. And I feel like, instead of turning around and hurting other people like why don't you save other people who are also being hurt like right like it i don't know what motivates somebody to do to do it one way over another way like that's for everyone else to decide for themselves but you know it's like this is the moment where where villains are born right like this is the moment where yu yu hase became yu yu hase so this is Alphano's biggest mistake, the Crystal Braves. Like this is what makes the scene when they're running away from Ulda and walking up to Ishgard so tragic because I just feel the weight that is on Alphano's shoulders. Like how could he not think that everything is his fault? People have died, the Scions have disappeared, the, he feels like he's been betrayed. Ah, oh, my all-conquering crystal braves. The model army meant to pave the way for a single unified grand company of Eorzea. That so high an ideal should be brought so low. I need not tell you how deeply the betrayal stung me. Yet I see now that it was mine own naivety and pride which allowed the braves to fall prey to corruption. Like there's just so many things that happen because of this whole Crystal Braves thing. And I I, I admire Alphano so much for how he grows from here, right? Like even in Heaven's Ward, you see how he reflects on this. He's so aware of how much he messed up. And I'm glad that he is aware of it, right? Like I'm glad that he vocalizes it. I am truly sorry. It was the Crystal Braves who pursued you that day. My hubris that led to our undoing. No apologies are necessary, Alpha No. You are not to blame for what occurred. Know that were our comrades here, they would commend you for keeping the light of hope alive. He obviously feels guilty. He feels like it's all his fault. And when you're in that kind of a position, like, 
not only do you feel horrible about yourself, but then it makes you change the way that you see the world. Like you start to question everything. You start to question your, yourself. You start to think like, oh, who can I trust? If I trusted these people who were so close to me and who 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 told me that they were loyal and that I could trust them and, and they turn around and literally murder people. He uses it as a situation to learn and to grow and and to be a better person versus do something like Ilbert or Yuhase and become a bad person, right? Like he doesn't project the same pain that was put upon him to other people. He uses it as like a way to make him stronger. Master Matoya asked me what it was all for, why we fight and why we die. Were I still commander of the Braves, I would doubtless have replied for the future of Eorzea, but I'm not that man. Not anymore. I needed a new answer. One that I could live with. And when I saw Estinian at the ceremony, I knew at last what it was. I do not want to be a man who sacrifices his friends and family for a cause. I want to fight for Estinian, and I want to save him. When Nidhogg leads the Horde into battle, Ser Emmerich and his forces will do what they believe must be done. That is their choice to make. Yet even if Ser Emmerich is willing to forsake Estinian, I am not. We must fight for him, for he is our friend and ally. We may struggle, we may fail, but we must try. I mean, that one dude who is so guilty because of what happened at Hawk Manor, like, he doesn't want to do anything for the rest of his life because he's so ridden with guilt. I can only imagine Alphano. He's just sitting there like, this is all my fault. But one of the things that really sets the foundation for the story of Final Fantasy XIV is the support system that Alphano has. You yet have allies upon whom you can rely. There is no need to act alone. And we are part of that, right? Like we are part of that support system. As ever, it is to your own shining example that I turn for inspiration. Like you, I mean to stand firm in the face of hardship and give mine all for the cause. I think that's the key. Like I think that's a big part of how people can grow from moments like this is it's hard to do it alone. I, I don't wanna say it's impossible to do alone, but I think it's really, like I wouldn't be able to do it alone. I'll speak for myself. I wouldn't be able to do it alone. Like I, I would need a support system of people who, who know me, who can get myself out of my own head because I would just be like going in circles thinking it's all my fault and, and having that like really horrible self-talk in my head of how it's like, it's all my fault, it's all my fault. And it's really hard to pull yourself out of that. Master Alphano, I am pleased to see that the light of resolve shines in your eyes once more. Ah, yes. How pathetic I must have seemed to you when we last met. I am ashamed to record it. For a time, I was well and truly lost. But with the aid of my comrades, I have since refound my purpose, and I shall take care not to misplace it again. But to have someone that you trust, someone who can put things in perspective, like Tataru or Horshafant, and say like, hey, you know, no, you're not without allies. No, this is what we're gonna do next. Like, here's all the good things that you did. Like, to just remind you of that and to help you take those next steps forward so you're not doing it alone. And so you can find your footing again, you can stand back up. You're not like, you know, you have someone to lean on whenever you start to question yourself again. And I like that we play such a role in that as the warrior of light. Like, I think that's why Alphano is such a, an awesome character to me. Like one of my favorite characters because we, we were there every step of this mistake happening, right? Like we were the ones for some reason recruiting the people who, who were joining the Crystal Braves. And then we see him go through this entire arc, even to just the end of Heaven's Ward. Like it goes on from there, obviously, but for the purposes of this video, like even even how much he grows and learns and reflects through the end of the patch content in Heaven's Ward, it's really, 
it's just really inspiring to see. Like, this is why he's one of my favorite characters. Let us resume the search for our missing comrades, that we might come together to shine the light of dawn across the realm once more. The role of Crystal Brave Commander suited me ill, and I shall play it no longer. Henceforth, I shall be no more or less than Alfino, proud member of the Scions. I think one word that I would use to describe how I feel about Alfino, well, two words, right? Two words. The first word I was thinking of is proud. Like I'm, I am proud of Alfino because even, even though he was so capable, like being this young person who entered the studio and was sitting at the table with the Eorzean nation leaders and like being so capable, being so talented at su such a young age, but then learning this, you know, horrible lesson and making this huge mistake that had such dire co consequences where people died and other people went missing and it was just this whole thing. But him being able to take this experience and grow from that, I mean, it's like I couldn't help but remember this every time he was on the screen. It's just like, this is that same person. This this person who is doing something so incredible now is is that same person who felt so lost because of how much they messed up with the whole Crystal Braves thing. And the other word is admiration, right? Like I can't help but admire that. I, I would hope that anyone who would mess up so royally could also grow so far right from such a grave mistake like it's just it's not everyone can do it straight up you know like not everyone can do it and i think it's it's a lot of things right it's having that support system it's being the person that alpha no is at his core cease your mewling boy it grates my ears Forgive me. When I saw you awaken, I could not... It was such a relief. We feared you might never wake up. Now, now, Astinian. If Master Alphano thought any less of you, you would still be Nidhogg's plaything. Or dead. Aye, aye, twas but a jest. I thank you, Alphano. And you too, warrior of light. I think all these things contribute to how he is able to move forward. But it's like, not only does he move forward, but he, he becomes this just, I don't want to say completely different person, but he really does grow in a way that is like so awesome for the story that is Final Fantasy XIV. So I feel a very unique connection to Alphano because of his arc. You just see every single step of the way how it's playing out and it just, it just makes you feel so bad. But then to see how he grows and becomes like one of the best characters in Final Fantasy XIV was such a joy. It was awesome to see. So. Oh my gosh, this is such a long video. My raw footage is at two hours and I still have more to record. So wow, this is probably going to be my longest video, but I had a lot of fun talking about Alpha No and, and doing a deep dive. I think it's interesting that a world that has dragons and Asians and primals and beast tribes and all these things can have so many parallels to my own life in the real world. and even the same lessons and and things that i've learned in my career like it's it's cool to be able to see that in this video game that i love so much right because it makes me resonate with it even more i mean alfano i've been there man like a thousand percent I, we would totally be friends in real life and i feel like we would have a lot to talk about so Thank you so much for indulging me and letting me talk about Alphano for this long. I would love to know what you think of Alphano. So let me know in the comments and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.